1949. Samuel Putnam publishes his new translation of Don Quixote, the first in what we would consider modern English. The People's Republic of China, the Federal Republic of Germany, and the Democratic Republic of Germany come into being. Nathuram Gorse and Narayan Apte are executed for assassinating Mohandas Gandhi. Death of a Salesman opens in the Morosco Theatre and runs for 742 performances. Brady, a 1,200-pound cow, gets stuck inside a silo on a farm in the United States. The first half of Verdi's opera, Aida, conducted by Arturo Toscanini, is telecast by NBC Live. George Orwell's book, 1984, is published. English astronomer Fred Hoyle coins the term Big Bang during a BBC radio broadcast. A young Indian woman called the Hindu atomic bomb takes the world by storm. Her name was Minalini Sarabhai. Anum dum danum dum danaganum dataganum dataganum dum danum dum danum dum dataganum dum danum dum danaganum dataganum 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 Bharat Natyam's history spans over a millennia. With the 11th century temple of Chidambaram in South India showing dance poses still performed in the style. Over the centuries, Bharatanatyam remained a temple dance, danced in the sanctum sanctorum of temples by solo woman dancers wedded to the deity as part of religious offerings. By the late 19th century, the form had fallen from grace, helped by the prudish policies of the British rulers. It was during Bharatanatyam's darkest days that Mrinalini was born in the British presidency town of Madras to Dr. Subram and Ammu Swaminath. From a very young age, she showed a deep passion for dance. However, there were no schools to teach classical dance and she had to spend years in a village with a guru undergoing many hardships. She was a pioneer among those who gave classical Indian dance its respectability once more and showcased its magnificence to India and the world. Muradini Sarabhai was the pioneer among Indian contemporary dancers. She had studied classical Indian dance forms, Bharatanatyam, from no less a guru than Guru Meenakshindran Pillai, Muthukwar Pillai, and Kathakali from Guru Kunjukuru. But she was already a legend when I was barely 22. When I saw her, she was a thinking woman. She mastered the technique, but she also thought, what do I do with this technique? How do I relate this technique to the contemporary situations? to the environment. This was the time of the nation building activity and in the nation building activity she thought she has to contribute something, not just do classical dance performances. Encouraged by her scientist husband Vikram Sarabhai, she founded her own academy Darpana in Gujarat to teach and propagate classical dance and music. Well, when I married Vikram and came for the first time to Gujarat, I found that there was really no knowledge about South Indian dancing here. There was Garba, of course. And so I started first dancing myself, wherever people invited me. Then slowly I thought it is much better to start an academy and let other children learn to dance. And that's how Darpana was formed. <laughs> Yeah. 
Mrinalini first started dancing, dance had just come out of the temples where the space for dancing was tiny. Many of her contemporaries continued to do Bharatanatyam on the stage covering only the center. So one of her first innovation was in spreading out the dance and making it wide, filling the stage, making it broad so that the stage got covered and the audience could see a much larger, much more expansive form of dance. Bharatanatyam has both the masculine and the feminine aspects, the Tandava and the Lasya. But because it was done only by women, it was the Lasya that was predominant. When Mrinalini formed her own group and more and more men started doing Bharatanatyam, she emphasized on the Tandava or the masculine aspects for both the men and the women. And this made her style of Bharatanatyam not only expansive, but extremely vigorous and strong. Rukmini Devi Arundel and my mother Mrinalini were the first two educated pioneers reintroducing Bharatanatyam to the world. But I think being called the foremost exponent of Bharatanatyam was never enough for her. And she started wanting to push the boundaries of the style. She started this very complex group choreography. She took the alphabet of Bharatanatyam and created to abstract thoughts. She threw away lyrics completely. In fact, what she spawned is what we call Bharatanatyam experimentation even today. She had this restlessness of spirit that constantly led her to search for something new. She started working with sound, for instance. She took the bowls, the onomatopoeic syllables of the mridangam, the percussion instrument, and while they were neutral sounds, she imbibed them with meaning and with feeling, like in her piece, Memory is a Ragged Fragment of Eternity. I always wanted a change from Bharatanatyam as it was and always I would add a little thing to Bharatanatyam also to make it a little more interesting. I, I get fed up with just doing the same thing every day. Minalini was also the first woman ever to learn the all-male style of Kathakali going on to win its highest accolade, the Veera Shrinkala. Kathakali was born about 500 years ago as a storytelling dance form in Kerala. Performed in all-night performances in a temple courtyard, lit by oil lamps and watched by thousands of people, the makeup and costumes were exaggerated to create a larger-than-life mythic experience. For her own group at Darpana, Minalini started looking beyond Bharatnatyam and went to Kerala in search of artists. She found the magnificent male dancer Chatunni Panikar who became her long-term partner and soon they were touring the world with a large group of dancers and musicians. I heard so much about Manushya, which Nuralini uh, Bennett choreographed somewhere in 1949. And then the first time I could see was in the All India Dance Seminar 
in 1958 in uh, New Delhi and it was astounding the form of Kathakali she had not deviated from, but she had bared the form taking away all the costumes, color, makeup and what have you and you could see the strength of the form and you had a vehicle of Chatuni Panikar, exceptionally brilliant, gifted, good looking man with his virility etc. The way he stood there or way he extended his leg and then looked into the water and saw his first mirror, the story of man came alive and the entire galaxy of the dancers, musicians, painters, scholars, writers, they are astounded what Brunalini had created. Now this is the power of her contemporary thinking. This is the power that having known Kathakali as a dance form, she was able to bring out the essence of the dance form in a most magnificent manner. If the contemporary dance began in India, from the tradition, this is where it began. I was giving a lecture on Kadakali and uh, Kadakali actors were all there and they started showing the gestures and how you do a woman in Kadakali, how you do a hero in Kadakali and so on. But because of the movement of the eyes and the lips and so on, these women started laughing. And that made me really angry because they were doing it so beautifully and so wonderfully well that instead of learning about it, they just laughed. So when I went home that day, I decided that I would do a full Kadakali piece without the costumes to show them the power of Kadakali and how beautiful a form it is. <laughs> The story of Manushya is the story of the life cycle of a human being. As a child comes into infancy, he discovers the power that he has over his hands and his legs, the fact that he has a self that can control this. He becomes a young adolescent, falls in love, gets married and goes through life till he finally comes to his last few moments. To think that Pranalini Sarabhai thought of this theme as early as 1949 and used a classical form in a contemporary way was a huge step forward for Indian dance. From the last decades of the 19th century, 
Rabindranath Tagore was a towering cultural figure in India and his school Shanti Niketan was a crucible for some of the country's most powerful creators and visionaries Spending 3 years with the Nobel laureate Mrinalini was greatly influenced by him Tashir Desh, the kingdom of cards, was Tagore's protest against the stifling strictures of religion, especially Brahminical Hinduism. A young prince is shipwrecked on an island, the kingdom of cards, with rules that allow the inhabitants no personal freedom. Slowly, the prince converts them to being free spirits. <laughs> To develop a movement vocabulary for Tashir Desh, where she wanted to show the limited possibilities of movement that reflected Tagore's interpretation of Brahminism, of people who were so restricted that they wouldn't look right or left or wouldn't bend down and so on and so forth she once again went back to kathakali and in some senses reduced the kathakali movements to in to a to, to a period of absurdity so that when through the entrance of the prince the characters start getting more and more liberated and finally find complete liberation she could go back to the strength and the beauty of the actually kathakali movements Centenary was in 1961, and that was the year we did Tashi Desh, and it was became very popular, but it didn't have the force that I wanted it to have. So the, I changed it a bit and made it very strongly against all isms, not only one but all isms. And in the festival, people really appreciated that and thought that it was a very strong, um, very strong statement against. Where mostly people thought it was against communism. In fact, when we did it in China, they did not uh, appreciate it at all because they were full of what Tashi Desh was. And so it had a meaning for almost every kind of person or every kind of feeling that people had about isms. In 1979, it took a lot of courage to take a piece proclaiming the importance of personal freedom to China. But Mrinalini wasn't just any dancer. From breaking social taboos by dancing in the first place, to being given Tagore's newly composed dance dramas with his blessings to choreograph them, she was primed to dance a different path. And this she certainly did, starting with her first piece on a serious social scourge, dowry deaths and violence against women within the family. Jump. 
You know, uh, I was learning Gujarati and trying to read the newspapers and I was very shocked one day to read about dowry debt. How the, even there is not enough dowry paid in kind or in money or anything, the girl was very often murdered and that horrified me. I'd never, never heard of dowry debts before. So whatever stirs me, I throw out in dance, I should say. And anyway, there was no music about, my, about this um, deaths. So I put everything into Sholagattu and it worked very well. You know, jump, ta jump, takadita, takadita, takadita. It goes with the movement because you didn't have to understand the words because people often don't understand what the musician is singing, if it's Tamil or Telugu or whatever. Here everyone understood it. The first time that I ever performed in memory was in the early 90s and it was then that I realized the sheer horror of this violence. We took it around to several countries besides India as well and I remember the first time that we performed it abroad was in Perth at the Perth Festival and the complete horror of the women in the audience and many of them came backstage and said that though they don't necessarily have dowry violence, uh, as a country which has a lot of violence against women, they understood the violence and the horror and the fear of this. Another innovation that Mrinalini brought in was the use of classical stories to drive home contemporary issues. In 1971, she took the story of Shakuntala from the Indian epic, the Mahabharata. In the classical story, Dushanta banishes Shakuntala because she cannot reproduce for him his signet ring, which is the promise of marriage. And Shakuntala is banished and disappears. But in Amma's version, at that stage, when she's banished from the court, she turns around and goes to Dushanta and says, but a king must have his ring, so where is the ring? She goes to her father, Kanva, and says, you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you warn me? She goes to her two friends and says, you heard the curse, so why didn't you tell me? And she says, why did nobody tell me that I would have to suffer this? For me, this was an incredibly feminist and very modernistic take on a very classical and very subservient woman kind of story.
I was always looking for subjects that would shake people in dance. And when I heard of this incident in Ranmalpur, I was horrified. I had heard of it before of cruelty to Harijan, but I'd never really felt it as I did then. And it was then that I decided that I should dance it and show it to people. And it was then that Tagore had written a play also called Chandalika, which was on the same theme. And I took both of these ideas, Chandalika and my own ideas, and mingled them into a dance where it showed how Harijans were treated in our country, how people killed people, their own people. And that horrified me. And the only way I could talk about it was to dance. Usually dance is considered most beautiful with lovely movements of the hands and the legs. But here I was trying to show something that was ugly. Tagore's poem was wonderful, all the lines I loved, but I couldn't really fit them into this horror. While Chandalika dealt with the tyranny on the so-called untouchables in India, in every country it was performed, minority communities felt it reflected their realities. So what I did was I just took the first two lines of a song and then created the terrible thing that was happening afterwards. So it only started with Tagore, but it ended with my own work of showing the horror, the terror, the fear. All these things couldn't be shown with a beautiful song. It had to be hit hard at people. And so the music also had to be powerful enough for people to feel what was really happening in real life. Amma parayi, nungle kathagali marku, kathagali marku, kathagali vittittu povo. Nungle kathagali gullele vechirna petliya, nungada shariram veerenda. Yena ta chale movement gal ugly. The shariram gonda architecta. Adan amma da ullele dairenda. Vasha inkya the movement kitta mudhi chha. Yanga na yena ka padi sa dalle. Adu yena yena veer, yena veer. Vasha adin de effect sa Vikram Sarai be festival na na yengal adhyan chhe ta sadu. Adu Pitiya dua sahaja ni peti alkahiri parain aku kumula ana adin da prayoga ngalai erde anu bawa adi ni kita jiu na stage le kerun na tu beri eh tu band adi ni kita peti le anda seri rata ni peti le anu le body mind tu akar ubiyo kiam betra ta vaste erna. Pasha tu audience ni ada adin da effect kitten kitty ni ganda pula da beri ananda nukar parain le ah uru ravaste erna tu kerinya po. By the 1980s, the world was realizing the gravity of the destruction that development was causing to our environment. Disturbed by news that the Silent Valley rainforest in Kerala was going to be partially destroyed for a Heidel project, Murnalini created the first of her many environmental pieces. It had always bothered me that the amount of tree cutting everywhere, not only in Gujarat, but in other states, that people so carelessly cut huge trees which have taken so long to grow. And so I started in a small association of Friends of the Trees, and we tried to prevent any tree cutting anywhere. We would go and tell the people that, please don't cut this tree, look how beautiful it is, look what it's doing to it for the shade and everything like that. And then Silent Valley happened in Kerala. And that was a huge project of destroying nature. So naturally, people wrote to me, and they even sent me some beautiful music. And to that music, I create a small dance drama. And we went everywhere in Kerala dancing that and speaking about nature and about the destruction of nature. There are still those who believe in violence who do not realize that they destroy the earth and with that they destroy man, all human beings who believe in violence 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Father, do not forgive them, for they do know what they do. Father, I came for peace. I too came for peace. Hey Ram! Adhyam, Silent Valley is a very important thing. Silent Valley is a very important thing. But the question is, what is the question? The classical question is, what is the question? The question is, what is the classical question? The question is, Adian, jangal itu, mana Delhi itu, Indira Gandhi itu, Mumbai lah ane cedah tu. Indira Gandhi itu, nara cco audience sendai erono, abadat cedah tu. Pasal, ini orang scene kerja, mula especially Christ in the sele bahagengal anda. Ada audience sendai ni, agak, nalla sabda, macam reaction, ada ane lah Indian kalangan itu, udesan dene rasam, nama kita gitu ana. The first time I saw the Ganga, the sacred river of the Hindus, I was really surprised. I was only nine years old, but I could see how dirty people had made it and how they could even bathe in it or worship it was beyond my uh, imagination. Many years later I saw it again and that's what gave me the idea for the dance drama Ganga. the effluence into our Ganga. Is this your worship? It was how to make people realize that this river Ganga that they worshipped and a dip in the Ganga meant you purified yourself. But how could you purify yourself in a river that was not even clean? And I thought that people also are very much like the Ganga, though we pretend to be very good and very, what should I say, harmonious with each other. We ourselves are so polluted inside that we don't even see pollution when we see it in the waters of the Ganga. We think just a dip in the Ganga and all our sins are forgiven. And I felt that somehow I have to tell people that they too must strive to be clear and clean and without any malice at all, like the Ganga was, not what the Ganga is today, but what the Ganga was. <laughs> By the early 1980s, Mrinalini was very concerned that young people growing up during that period didn't seem to be aware of what was really happening in India, the kind of issues that surrounded us and that they needed to address. So, this concern came out in a poem called, Is It a Dream? We had a well-known poet friend from Bhopal, Manohar Ashi, translated into Hindi as Kya Yeh Ek Sapna Hai and Amma created a dance piece around it with the objective that it could go anywhere with or without a stage, with or without technical uh, facilities but that it should somehow connect with audiences, whatever kind of audiences they were, whether they were young, or whether they were rural, urban and so on. And over the years this piece has performed in all sorts of spaces I think more than 10,000 times and it has always hit the mark. Ek 
जिसे जो पूजे उसे वो पूजे जिसे जो पूजे उसे वो I use the folk dance as a link between all the people of India because everyone can understand the language and the dance. And I thought that this was something we could take around everywhere and it had not moral, I don't like the word moral, but it had a lesson in it to teach people. I never think of writing, it just comes to me, certain thoughts come to me and then I put them down. I don't think ahead of what I'm going to write. And I just am in a mood and I write something. Over the years, Is It a Dream has been performed in thousands of venues and has been taught in dozens of schools. A film made on the piece has been repeatedly telecast on television. The piece broke down many issues for young people, including bigotry, communal and religious hatred, and rape. Earlier, Mrinalini had experimented with the Western-style musical on the stories of Krishna, collaborating with jazz musician Louis Banks to enthuse children who liked rap music and Western beats. It was one of her many attempts at repackaging Indian mythology for young audiences today. Ding 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 
In the summer of 2004, Milanini undertook one of the biggest challenges that a choreographer can face, depicting the history of Indian science through dance. And for me, Tom Alter, it was a great experience to be part of this project with Amma. And let me just reassure you that I did not dance in this project. I only lent my voice. Rakhi Piramal came one day. I didn't know her, but she came to meet me and asked me if I would do a dance drama on science. I said, uh, even though I was married to an eminent <coughs> scientist, I don't know whether I could do it. She said, no, I'm sure you can. And it was a challenge for me. So I started working on it and reading about science, how to put it together. To put science into dance is quite difficult. And so I tried my best and uh, finally managed to come out somehow. And I think I got all the facts correct. And I knew much more about science after that. I was full of triangles and decimals and all sorts of shapes. And, and it had to be visually beautiful, otherwise nobody would understand it. And so I just went on trying to do whatever I could with the figures and as many figures as possible. But once it started, and once I started getting a kind of feel of it, then it went very smoothly. So it was great fun. I enjoyed it. The inspiration for the whole of Indian mathematics is geometry. The beginnings of algebra can be traced to the constructional geometry of the Vedic priests. triangle and the square were formed at this time. With four times the square root of the total, 
He killed his horses. It's huge amount of work. Choreographed by Mnadalini Sarabhai, the concerns are contemporary as they were relevant 60 years ago or even today. Take the issue of environment, take the issue of empowerment of women, take the issue of Dalit women, take the issue of dowry deaths. Mnadal has touched it so beautifully and has convincingly taken them not as a copy of the West or share of the West, but taking from the very roots of the tradition of Kathakali or Bharatanatyam. Some may find it very distorted, she had to do it because of the necessity of the choreography etc. But the resonances are entirely Indian, be it music, she also experimented the music of Beethoven or other musicians from the West etc. But the core remained very very Indian and that is where her genius lies. The genius always works out in a manner where even the Indianness is really fine and this redefinement of Indianness in her work is so exemplary that the contemporary, the young generation today would learn a lot from it that how if you are truly Indian, genuinely Indian, take from your roots and from your tradition, you can create wonders. Krishna ni begane baro Krishna ni begane Krishna ni begane baro begane baro mugaban